Welcome back once again to Let's Play some Rome Remastered, yes! I'm not streaming this until Sunday. Today is, what, Thursday? So you'll be seeing this hopefully on the same day Thursday. And I thought, I can't leave you until Sunday till we get another episode of this. So I've come back from uh, London yesterday, had my rest. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to get some uh, Rome Total War uploaded. Hopefully a couple of sessions before the stream on Sunday. Because... There's a last few little bits of preparation to take care of before we absolutely give the British some hell for daring to attack us. So I've done a lot of stuff off camera in terms of building work, in terms of taxes, so I won't bore you with that kind of stuff, which I have to do on a stream, of course, but off stream I can cut all that off, which I've done. So the general plan for today's session, until the AI deems otherwise, is to prepare our four armies for attacking the British in Gaul and then ultimately taking the fight to them in their homelands in Britannia. We have an army headed, or soon to be headed, by one of their own Votoporix, the Britun Cooley. We'll have to give him a nickname. Far too much effort to pronounce that name. Uh, he will be bribed across hopefully next turn and he will lead uh, this army combined with this army. Uh, not our most elite of course but it's just going to harass, maybe take down some of the uh, British armies in the field to weaken them to allow our more elite troops to actually do the donkey work in taking down the settlements. But uh, that's going to be one army. The second army is currently under siege here in Narbo, which is rather unfortunate, and uh, our lazy Giscon is just like chilling out. It's fine, we've got stone walls, let them come to us, it'd be fine. Uh, so he's not going to sally forth. Two potential plans for dealing with this situation. The first one is in the form of bribery with this diplomat here. I'm not holding out much hope for that because it's probably going to be more expensive than we can afford, rather strangely considering how rich we are given that he's only a one uh, influence diplomat. The other thing is, they'll attack us and we shall have to beat them on the battlefield. But if they do attack us, we've got walls, we've got slingers, we've got elephants, we should win that fight. Should, being the operative word there. So we'll see what le what is left of his army after all of this kerfuffle, but hopefully it won't be too badly depleted and then we can use that as a counter-attacking force as force number two. Force number three is our very own Bizaltes, the killer, the, the magnificent, the conquering supreme leader of Carthage. He is retiring from service, having now conquered Rome along with the entirety of Italy, taking down the Brutia and Scipere the Julii, conquering Sicily, capturing Caralis, taking some lands over here as well on the coastline of the Adriatic. Quite the achievement. So he's earned his rest. He's going to return to Carthage for his triumph. And uh, his troops that are left behind will be left in the capable hands of Sakar Gades as a potential of a future ruler. Sakar Gades is one, and uh, the other one is uh, this fella, Chiron, as a potential. They're both leading armies and therefore we're going to assess who does the best and the winner of the little competition might well find themselves as the faction heir before Bizaltes passes, depending on how well they do. So the third army will be the all-conquering... We should have really given this army... The Army of the Middle Sea was its name given to them by Bazaltus. The army of the Middle Sea will continue to ride forth and do the work of the mighty Carthage, but Bazaltus is now retiring from service. He's got a triumph to, 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 to bask in. So uh, that's going to be that army's uh, task. So that's army number three, and of course army number four, which is the most mighty army that uh, our country has ever seen, our empire has ever seen, on its way uh, right there, with uh, one unit of uh, of slingers. Yeah, 
so that's going to do some... Yeah, of course not. We've got the full army here with the Peely Infantry, with the, um, the Sacred Band Cavalry, with the Sacred Band. Look at it. It's, it's just made up of the most elite units that we can possibly have. The Peely Infantry. Everything there screams death and destruction to the enemy. And that's exactly what's going to happen to them. Death and destruction. So that's the fourth army. So between those four armies, the British will not know what hit them. Trust me. So we're going to advance the time now because everything has been done. And we're going to make sure that that happens. Also, um, we're going to need a man to govern Rome. We can't leave Rome ungoverned. So when Bizaltes leaves and Sakabul leaves, someone's going to have to come there and keep watch. Well, that person is going to be this guy, Abdusir, with a great management, uh, a little bit of command. He is going to be the man responsible for overseeing Rome, and um, which is almost like our second capital at this point now, isn't it? Um, he's the son of the mighty Theopanus, who Bizaltas has a great deal of respect for, and therefore a son of such a great man and who's shown such great aptitude for management is the prime candidate to head across uh, to govern uh, Rome. So he's going to go across there and govern Rome in the absence of the mighty Bizaltes and Sakabal. And then this fella here, who we bribed across, Manius Pilatus, not to be confused with Pilates, which you do to keep fit, is going to be the defensive general to keep an eye on the Greeks and on the British, who are coming far too close to our Italian land. So he's going to be responsible for organising between these five settlements a defensive force that we will put in Patavium to be that force that stands there on attention just in case the British get a bit frisky. If they start to come down or look like they're going to encroach in our, into, into our lands here, that's the force that will be taking care of business. So we'll have to recruit an army for that purpose as well. So lots of armies being recruited. We've got lots of money to do it. So without further ado, I've blathered on now for nearly enough seven minutes in this introduction. And I make no apologies. Um, let's dive in and see what the hell happens. This session will be about 40 minutes. A quarter of which I've just taken up with the introduction. Right, this is obviously quite bad. Um, we're not going to win this. I'm not going to waste my time. We were going to throw it away at some point. So, there we go. If the Dacians were still alive, we would have gifted it to them, so we're not overly concerned that we've lost that. It is rather painful that it's the British that have done that to us because we don't like them, but hey, we shall certainly have the last laugh. We shall have them coming to us on bended knee, begging for a piece by the time we've finished with them and telling you. <sighs> right, anyway. Don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Bizaltus takes everything personally. A slight on Carthage is a slight on him. And he doesn't like being slighted. What the hell is that noise? We could do with strengthening our navy in the Bay of Biscay, it seems. Things are getting a bit raucous. Ooh, lots of British armies just meandering around, which is great. More victims. More victims to add to the to the to add to the pyre, the great big bonfire that shall soon be happening. Uh, right, I shall not bother just yet with any upkeeping situations. The settlement besieged, right. Nabo Martius. Yes, we're well aware, thank you. We've got a plague in uh, Alexandria. Has the plague in Carthage finished? The plague in Carthage has finished. Carthage are so used to being beset by plague from the times of Hasdrubal that they have much more efficient processes in place to deal with it. Hence their plague finishes in a couple of turns and Alexandria still lingers on about six turns later. Well done, Carthage. Well done. And we've lost our youth of them. Not a problem. Riches faction? Ah. 
and we've got some retinue expansions across the uh, across the lands, which is good to see. Okay, right, where do we start? 94,000. We, we've never topped the 100,000 mark just yet, but we could soon do that. And we're turning 40,000 per turn, which is absolutely insane. Bezaltes is carrying on the good work of Hasdrubal. Even though Bezaltes has not been one to be uh, bothered by coins and status, numerous statistician people uh, and all that kind of jazz, um, through sheer conquering and sacking and conquering and sacking, who needs to who needs to balance the books? When you take the gold of your enemies and ship it back home, who cares about balancing books? Just put it on the pile. Put it on the, we don't need to count the coins; just weigh them. It's quicker. Um, so anyway, right. Let's start here. No, let's start. You know what? Let's start here. We've got to prioritize our money. And our money would be best served bribing this army away because it's causing a bit of an issue. So uh, it'll also buy us, it'll buy us some time, no pun intended. So we'll see if they're a game for a little bit of bribery here. I will speak with them at once. I'll pay probably. Our patience is limited. I'll pay up to fifty grand for a for a. Uh, for, for a bribe here. I'm just going to tinker and toy to see how close we are to a potential peace with these people. You know what? We're not far. We're not far. I reckon even 10 grand might be enough. Which is very cheap. Okay, maybe not. Okay. 20 grand? We'll be generous, right? Oh, balance. Okay, so... Uh, about 22, 20, 22, 23 grand probably would be the price of a ceasefire with the British. How interesting. How interesting. That price will come down, don't you worry. Right, but anyway, we're not bothered about uh, ceasefires just yet. We haven't done the damage that we set out to do. But bribery, on the other hand, we're open for a bit of that. What say you? You insult us. I didn't think that would work, to be honest with you. Didn't think it would. So, uh, it looks like we're going to have to fight this. So, Giscon is going to have to pull his socks up. The old proverbial socks will have to be pulled up quite sharply, in fact. Because in five turns' time, or probably sooner than that, we're going to be beset by a lot of British. Not to mention that they seem to be bringing reinforcements down as well. So, uh... We could do with a reinforcement or two of our own. Now this fella is running off rather unfortunately. Which means that we can't bribe him this turn. Your obedient servant. So if he comes this way, we'll be in, he will be in bribing range of this diplomat. If he comes back the other way, he'll be in bribing range of this diplomat. So that is indeed fine. Forward. What we're going to do is just prepare ourselves with our army. So we've got uh, one, two, three. We could do with another set of horses. So four horses, in addition to the general. We've got a couple of skirmishers. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So three more spearmen. Which is perfect. There we go. There's a bit of an issue with the uh, tax, the, 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 the public order now, never mind, but that's fine. So this is the army, another unit of horses soon to follow, and then the general. And that would be a full stack army with a little bit of skirmishing capabilities here. So, well, uh, oh, I've got long shield cab as well now. So we'll get a unit of that, and then we'll stock up with a more units of spear or something just to replenish the numbers and sort the public order out so there you go army is ready we haven't got time to really dither too much in in sorting out the the the, the, the composition but it doesn't matter so that army is ready just wait just need a general to lead it it is all and we have our sights on just the man hopefully he'll uh, play ball in the next turn 
So, uh, right, okay, so we can't bribe this army. We could maybe try to bribe some of the reinforcing armies away to make the life a little bit easier for for Chappy here. Alternatively, we could bribe this smaller army away as well. So, we'll see how much coin we've got when we've done our building work and stuff. But uh, I'll play, I'll see what we're going to do. If we're going to bribe anybody here, I think bribing some people might be uh, might be a, a benefit. But uh, we'll play that by ear uh, in due course. Meanwhile, full speed ahead yes, my dear come the ships. Full speed ahead yes, my come dear the ships. Next turn, we should be ready to land our mighty force. Led by Kiron. We may even get close enough to be able to lift the siege with brute force. We shall see. So that's going to be uh, something that happens in the next turn or two at the very latest, which is good news indeed. And of course now we have good old Bizaltes coming home. Hi, my lord. Back to Carthage he comes for his triumph he shall be there next turn and then you, and then um, Abdesia will go back to uh, govern Rome so we've got a few little orange face situations happening which is fine we'll sort that out uh, army movements there so the next and final well the final thing to sort out really is uh, let's get an army ready here at uh, Patavium so we've got two units of we, want, we don't want to want the peasants here anymore but we'll, we'll disband them in due course we do want as many units as possible Orders. and the leader going in we want as many peony infantry so that'll be one two Orders. three four five units of peony infantry which is fine uh, probably could do with some units of uh, spear militia which I have a great deal at the moment. I've got a couple there. My Let's get maybe one there. Okay. Passivium, can you recruit spear militia, spear infantry? Maybe three there. Take one out there. That's fine. Okay, and we'll get to two units of. Long shield, two units of round shield. There we go. And that's going to generally uh, look like a, some kind of a defensive force. So, Peony infantry, Orders. a general, some spear, Mighty some general. spear there, some spear being recruited. Horsey, horsey. Yeah, that's fine. So, we've got a defensive force being mustered here in northern Italy quite swiftly. That should be good enough to, to see off any British threats. But yeah, we, we see lots of these kind of half stat armies milling about. They have got quite a decent military. I mean, if you look at their uh, military ranking, it's not too shabby, is it? So they've got they've got numbers. And I'm just hoping that most of those numbers are pretty useless weak warband spam, but as we can see with some of these armies, there are some swordsmen, chosen swords as well. That's not warband spam, is it? That's quite decent fighting troops, so got to be careful here that we don't get too carried away with uh, our, our, our sort of uh, position. We should take this threat quite seriously. Uh, so that's the situation up there sorted. Um, forces moving, forces moving. Down here, we've got a peace with Egypt, which it seems to be holding. They don't seem to be sending anybody down close to our newly conquered territories, so we shall just maintain positions with our spies to keep an eye on the situation, um, which is good. Uh, just riding out the uh, riding out the storm, really, riding out the plague. Um, which we have done in Memphis. Memphis the plague is finished so we shall now start to replenish the lost troops. Orders. These guys waiting for the plague in Alexandria to finish and then we'll replenish those too and then between Alexandria and Memphis we'll recruit 
uh, a third army to put in a fort on the road there as planned. So we've got to cover between three armies just in case the Egyptians get a bit frisky. So I think we've got Egypt pretty much covered. So that is all of the movements of the armies and the preparations for our defensive forces sorted. So I'm going to now pause the recording, do the, the taxes and the housekeeping basically off camera and then we shall resume once again when I'm ready to end the turn. So back in a second. Okay, it didn't take as long as I thought, probably about, uh, about four minutes really. But uh, anyway, so all the building work is done, the taxes are done. The taxes are done. <laughs> Can't have people too happy. Can't have that bright green face looking at me. It means they're too happy. Gotta bring them down a peg or two. Uh, so the taxes is done, returning 40 grand, still 70 grand in the coffers, which means we'll be up to 110,000 in the next turn. So let's uh, roll it on and enjoy the fruits of our labour. Or maybe not, as the case might be. Path blocked. It's fine, sir. It's fine. Abdesi has got a tutor, which is great because he's off to Rome, so the tutor can teach him on all things management. Right, shall we try that again? Are they going to attack? Interesting. Interesting. They don't have any uh, reinforcements within range. None at all. I was debating whether to actually save it now, end the session shorter than planned, and have this as the opening move of the stream, which would be quite cool. But I want to do some more sessions before the stream, so I don't. Th this is going to probably take about half an hour, so it'll make me go over time. But you know what? It'll be worth it. Giscon, you're going to have to get out your chair, son. They've come. At the, they've, they've come for you. Let's go. We're a bit depleted in terms of numbers, but hey. We'll be, we'll be fine. 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 Today is a good day to die. But better still... Okay, so they've got, uh, as we can see, the, the, the towers, they've got the ladders, they've got the rams, they've got a, they've, they've got a few things. Um, you can't be too cocky here because, you know, we could end up in a situation where we might be in a bit of trouble. Um, I've got to get there towers and stuff to the walls as quickly as they can. I'm debating as to whether or not we take the horses and the elephants outside to cause havoc with flanking manoeuvres, but considering they've got heavy swordsmen, the infantry, the, 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 the horses don't tend to do too well against them. The elephants will. But then the elephants might cause even better havoc. The, the elephants would cause better havoc outside the walls. The pathfinding inside is horrendous, right? So we should probably get the elephants outside together with the horses. So I'm thinking of taking uh, one set out that door, one set outside the other door, and then just cause a little bit of havoc, you know. When they start to climb up the ladders, then start to just pour in, overwhelm. We've got the towers firing down upon them. We'll have the Balearic Slingers with their great range firing down upon them as well. We'll have to be very careful to get these guys off the walls when it looks like the enemies are going to take the walls or get on the walls. We've got to be very careful with the Slingers. Peony infantry, quite significantly reduced in number. I mean, are they going to be better on the walls? I think. We With all haste. Infantry. Move, move. We infantry. 
possibly. I mean, who knows? These guys on the walls want me good. We'll get them at the gates, along with the general, perhaps just to oversee the situation. Uh, which then leaves the spearmen to man the walls as best they can. Okay, so. We've basically got all of our infantry and spear and peony on the walls. These guys, in case they get through the gates, horse just to oversee. These guys will come out and flank, as will these guys. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. We should. Because they don't have. They don't have any. Oh, I forgot that these towers do fire. The Slingers have great range, and with the height advantage, should really, really do a number on the enemy. But yeah, we need to ensure that we get our horses and elephants out ASAP, as quickly as possible, to cause all manner of problems for the enemy. And they're going to have to run. It's going to tie them out, but it has to happen. Uh, Ram is on fire, so that's great. Those guys are coming out. Some of them. Chosen swords, they could cause a bit of problems. 143. Chosen swords. Okay. The ladders have reached the walls. Prepare to defend the settlement in earnest. I took the slingers down first. Okay, good. Are the elephants attacking. Head hurlers, who the hell are they? issue here going on. We have lost some of our guys. Bloody flip. Oh, oh dear. Whoa, he's down. We've lost some elephants.
Their siege towers have reached our walls! Get the elephants in there. Are we are we losing this war battle? I think we might be, you know. Because I haven't brought these guys round. That's bloody why. Bloody fool. Quite a few Libyan spears here. Chosen swords this side. It's going a bit messy on the walls, unfortunately. Not quite going as planned. These guys have broken our elephants. Got the head healers routing. Oh lord, this is a lot, lot closer than I was hoping for. Okay, so basically they've only got the people on the walls right now. The walls belong to the enemy. Look now to brave men as the last line of defense. Lost. Oh Jesus. Which walls have we lost? to get ourselves back into the town square I think because uh, the enemy are going to be taking they've taken the walls Ooh, we've lost all of our infantry this is not looking good I must say these chosen swordsmen are very very tough Chosen swords this side are not doing quite as well. We've still got our some of our slingers peppering the enemy on the on this side. Which surely is helping our cause here. Debate whether to put more men on. Blasted flipping thingies, chariots. Get rid of them. See if we can get their routing. Okay, let's get our elephants back inside here. I don't want them in the line of fire here. I'm going to just put another set of men up here. This is not good. These guys are coming from the other side. Right, get these guys inside. Quite tempted to pull everybody off the walls here because if we fight in a situation on the walls like this where it's man for man we're not doing very well if we can get back down onto the floor where we can use our space to flank perhaps we might do a better job Units. quite tempted to get everybody off the walls What 
isn't so bad, you know. 71. I mean, it's safe to say that by the time we finish this fight, this army will not be in a position <laughs> to, to be taking part in any fight against the British anytime soon. But... As long as we keep the settlement, that's the main thing. This is the only other area. There's 99 there. There's 146 there. This is going to be the only problem now. That's the only thing they've got left. We've got elephants running amok. And exhausted. We should. I say this. Fighting to the death. Oh, my slingers got drawn in here. They have. God's sake. The joys of the Battle of Sieges. Coming round. Come on. Oh boy, they're coming down. Course, they will soon be coming down. They've got 385 men against our 757. Depends how well we deal with their chosen swords. They are going to have to come onto the ground, so you should just literally try and swarm them as much as we can. The general's off. The general is off. Oh, they're coming down this side. Coming down this side. This is where things get ha a bit hairy here. We should have them here. Giscon is in the fight. The elephants are pathfinding issues as usual. We've got them. We've got them. We've got them on this side. Oh, they're going! It looks like they're going here! Pin them in place! Pin them in place! Pin them in place! Don't charge into them yet! Not yet, not yet. Need to pin them in place and then charge into the backs. So that'll break them. 
We're still stuck because of pathfinding. We can't get into position. Slingers are trying to pepper them. The elephant's in. Come on, you stupid bloody things! Elephant, let's get in. Get in. We can't have these guys routing before we charge them, otherwise it's game over. Elephants. Get in! Okay, this will have to do. It'll be there, the world's worst and weakest charge, but it'll have to do! We got him! We got him! Holy cow! And there the elephants finally start to send a few of them in the bloody air! Good riddance! These guys are all retreating. I have no clue where the rest of them are. I've got some people that aren't retreating. That's why this battle still technically is not over. Oh, there we go. It is over. Still got 1,200 men left, technically speaking. And they've got 143. So, to be honest with you, that's quite a, a decent victory, I'd say. Decent. Decent. Not spectacular, but decent. Well done, Gisco. Now you can go back to eating your grapes and being fanned. Glorious victory. Excellent. Excellent. Right, I think um, after that uh, trauma, we'll just assess the situation and then we'll end the session without doing anything else. And in the next one, I'll uh, off camera tidy up some of the uh, off, you know, the uh, off camera stuff, the building work, the tax work, assess the situation. And in the next session, we can continue with our plan to amass our four armies, which might not have to be three. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, oh, hey. Thought it was going to turn around there for a second, but no, he continues to come towards us, and as I said, reinforcements are on the way, thankfully, because Giscon is going to need them after that fight. He's going to need them. But yeah, the British continue to send all their forces down towards us, which is great. It's absolutely fantastic. Keep doing that. Keep coming. Keep coming. Because it's just more ammunition. The more you kill yourselves attacking us, the, the easier it will be for us to take your lands when we're ready to, to do just that. I'm saying that with great confidence, but uh, they, they are proven to be quite the challenge. They, they, these guys could be our biggest challenge. We fought off Rutii, Scipii, Julii, Romans, you know, uh, Egyptians, which are not is no small fry themselves, of course, and it could be the British that proved to be the, the biggest challenge that we've faced in this campaign. Who would have thought that when we started the game? Anyway, let's go through the messages. Himilco the killer in Egypt has finally passed. Egyptian family members can breathe easy now. Alexandria the Plague continues to rage on. Protagonia, new family member. Giscon, confident commander? Really? Yeah, I won the fight. What more confident do you need to be? Uh, victory is victory, isn't it? Says Sakar. Says, says um, Giscon. Victory is victory. Whether it's one man left or a thousand and one, who cares? Victory is victory. Do I not still reign supreme in the Narbo? I think I do. Well, you, you technically do. How many men of, can we replenish in one turn? Enough. Kind of. We've still got a lot of slingers left, which is pleasing. Okay. And don't forget, this army is probably easier to bribe with the diplomat now because it's smaller. So we could also do that with our 110,000 coins, you know. But if you've got any tips about how to deal with the situation, any comments on Giscon's incompetence on the battlefield, or maybe I'm being too harsh on him, who knows. Um, still got our, a fairly decent contingent of elephants. Sling is still there, so I mean, technically speaking, if we just do a bit of trimming, a little bit of tinkering, a little bit of replenishing, this army could still, could still be the fourth army. 
once we've just tidied this up a little bit. But yeah, any comments welcome. But in the next session, we'll uh, tidy this up. We'll uh, get this army on the move. Uh, we'll get this army on the move as well. And of course, <laughs> the mighty army is about to land. So Operation Crush the British. Well... It's just about to kick off, I'd say. So join me next time. Until then, see you soon.